Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, blessed. Welcome back to 15 Minutes with the Captains. And this is part two of the curses among us, the curses among the nation of Israel. And that's how we identify who we are according to the Bible. To the, to the Bible. My name is Captain Palu, and to my right, Officer Daniela. So we coming back, all right? I hope y'all watched part one where we were speaking about the curses, all right? We went through Deuteronomy chapter... Uh, 28 verse 15 uh, went down to 16 and 17 45 through 47 went back to 21 and 26 and and did a couple of precepts so go back and watch part one uh, if you want to catch the first class so this is part two of finishing up the curses uh, that we've been through it's much more uh, but it'd be more in depth class but it's much more and these are curses that our people today can pretty much identify the mass, all right? So we left off on the last scripture we pulled was Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 31. Uh, we can reread that. Let's reread that, officer. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 31. Come on. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. So our ox, read it again. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. It says, thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. When did this happen? This happened when the conquistadors came to America, killed millions. Was it 33 plus million? Yes. This is what they say. Right. But 33 plus million Native Americans, all right, destroyed their cattle. And we used the cattle as not only for food but for clothing for uh, utensils, for shelter, and other things, all right? We use the whole animal. We don't just, we're just, just throwing it away. We use the animal, right. all right? That's how we survived. And for you to kill off 33-plus million people, that means the land was built up, right? That means we was everywhere. That's a lot of people. That wasn't just in Oklahoma. Or, that's throughout the United States, so we was dwelling over, over here for a while, had our civilization popping, and they came over and destroyed and sacked everything, all right? Uh, read it again. Verse 31. Come on. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Come on. And thou shalt not eat thereof. And we weren't able to eat it. That's how we survive. Our goats, our oxen, our bison, all of these things we weren't able to, to, to eat them. We weren't able to use the, uh, the skins for clothing or whatever, shelter, whatever the case may be. We weren't able to use them. Come on. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face uh -huh. and, shall not be, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies uh -huh. and thou shalt have none to rescue them. So they was given to our enemies. They either was taking them from us or they were destroying us. All right. Another thing that they gave was they gave us smallpox to kill us off. They, you know what I'm saying? They used all these different things to kill us off. And by the food taking the uh, animals away from us, they was trying to starve us out. All right. St killing us, starving us out, and all these things. All right. Come on. Uh, verse, verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. And thine eyes shall look and fell long with longing with them, excuse me, and fell with longing for them all the day long. So it said, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That happened to our people. All right? We were sold. We were sold on slave ships. I mean, was put on slave ships, got over here to the Americas or the West Indies or whatever we was playing. Uh, dropped off at, sold on auction blocks, they was taking our children away from us, or when we already was here enslaved and we buried children, right? They took them away from us. They took our kids to somewhere else and et cetera, then to Virginia, you was in probably, say Oklahoma, that somebody had come, a, a plantation owner had come, that's from Virginia, come and take your child and take them back to Virginia. You'll never see that kid again. Right. You'll never see that kid again. That's you, you birthed it. You breastfed it. You took care of it. You clothed the kid. You'll never see that child again. Just like the Native Americans. 
right. are the so-called Native Americans, uh, known as uh, Gad, the tribe of Gad, or the tribe of Reuben. The, their children were were taken and put into boarding schools mm-hmm. away from their parents. Right. And they will not see their kids until they're like 18 or visit them in powwows. So they, and who knows what happened? Who right. knows what happened to them children? They probably was getting molested. All types of things was probably happening right. in those boarding schools. Read that again. Verse 32. Uh-huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, uh-huh. and thine eyes shall look and, and fell with longing for them all the day long. So that's what happened. We was, our eyes were, were, well, it says, thine eyes shall look and fell with longing for them all the day long. So that means we was trying to, we, in our mind, our children was taken from them, and we thinking, like, how can I find my, how, how's my child doing right now? Right. How am I going to ever, am I going to ever see my kid again? You know how painful that is? And this is what happened today when it comes, uh, some of y'all might say CPS, but here in Oklahoma it's DHS, Department right. of Human Services. They come in, take your kids over little stuff, just so you don't have to, just so that your kid can go into the system. Normally them kids that go into the system end up doing what? They get out at 18. Really, before then, nobody wants them. Nobody wants to adopt them or anything like that. Right. They never. They give you the runaround of you getting your children back. Then when they get out of the system, they go what? Try to survive in the world. They get into all types of stuff. Now they're back in prison. I've seen it happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen. So they, they take our kids today. All right? Come on. And fell with longing for them all the day long. Uh-huh. And there shall be no might in thy hand. And we will have no power to be able to get them back. No power to get them back. All right? Jump down to verse 37. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Come on. And thou shalt become an astonishment. We should be a what? Astonishment. We should be an astonishment. Come on. A proverb. A proverb. When people look at us, they're like, look at these people. These people are supposed to be on top, but look how they acting now. Right. They're on the street on drugs. They shooting one another. They whore out their women. They don't respect their women. These people are astonished. They laugh at us. But we suppo- they know we're supposed to be on top. But our people not understanding their true power and repentance and keeping the commandments of God, that's why we're on the, that's why we're on the bottom. But if you knew then listen, you'll understand that you need to keep the commandments so we can get out of this, right. so we can be back on top again. Right. All right, come on. A proverb and a byword. A proverb and a byword. The byword is we hear all the time, nigga, spit, cone, uh, wet back, African-American. Oh, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm uh, Jamaican. I'm, I'm Haitian. You know what I'm saying? What? No, just like we a proverb. What it say? Uh, if you want to hide something from a nigga, what do you put it? Put it in the book. You put it in the book, because our people don't want to read, especially right. the Bible. Right. This is the most important book in the world, and you should be reading it. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, come on. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So all the nations in the world. They feel the same way about you. You go to ja- you go to Japan right now, they're gonna call you a nigga. Right. You go to Holland, they're gonna call you a nigga. It, it is what it is. You go to New Zealand, you go anywhere, you're gonna be called by words. They're gonna call you other names. Period. This is how they do it. Especially when you go to the Arab countries, people that go in the military, they go to Iraq and stuff like that. They call them names. You know what I'm saying? I hear it all the time. Brothers in the military, they're like, yeah, they call us this. You a Bauer. Basically, you a nigga in Arab. Right. <laughs> it's basically what they're saying. You a nigga in Arab. All right? Jump down to verse 41. Verse 41. Uh-huh. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. And now, the scripture is saying, we're going we're gonna to have children. We're going to build children in our captivity. But guess what? Come on. But thou shalt not enjoy them. But we're not even going to be able to enjoy our kids. We want, we're not going to be able to raise them. We're not going to have any memories of them or any of those things. That's what our forefathers and foremothers went through. Right. And now today our people spit in our forefathers and foremothers' face now. 
by not trying to understand their history. It's people that really that don't know that we went on slave ships. How? And then you don't care? What did Steve Harvey say? I don't give a damn about slavery. And you see he's cooning all the time. Right. Cooning all the time. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the problem. He thinks because he got a little money, I ain't got to worry about slavery. I, I, I'm good. My family's straight. But there's people out here dying. Right. There's people out here lost. We got to change that. Read that scripture again. Verse 41. Uh-huh. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, mm. for thou shalt go into captivity. Because they are going to go into captivity themselves. Right. They're going to have hard bondage. They're going to go through all the things that you're going through and that your forefathers are going through. Why? Because we broke the commandments of God. We don't want to listen. We was rebellious. And we were rebellious. To, we're rebellious more now than we've ever been. Right. And it's judgments for that. You got to figure out which side of the coin you want to be on. You want to repent and keep do what God say? Or... You want to stay in America thinking what you thinking what you knowing is right. I'm saved by grace. Christ already nailed it to the cross. I'm I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. You're gonna get destroyed. You ain't doing nothing that God tells you to do. Right. But you think you're holy and then thou. You out of your mind. All right? Jump down to verse um, 45. Verse 45. Uh-huh. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So, it says all these curses. If you go back to, uh, to part one, I go over a lot of curses, right? Those curses and the curses we're going over today. And there's many more, all right? It's 68 scriptures. No, actually, was it 15, to six, 15 through 68 right. that has curses in it? All right, those are the curses that our people are living by. I'm going to give it a, a few of them, a few of them. And all of these is going to happen to our people, and we're living proof. We're going through it now. Right. It happened. This was a prophecy. Moses said, listen, this is going to happen. Now, did it happen to them at the time? No. Yo, 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 kids, kids, kids is going to go through this. Because y'all rebellious. Y'all don't want to do what God say. Y'all going to go through this. Your kids, kids, your grandchildren is going to go through these curses. And it's going to happen. It ain't no if. It said shall. You're going. You're going to go through these curses. All right? Come on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read it, read it from the top. <clears throat> Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee uh -huh. and shall pursue thee and overtake thee. So they're going to, it says, those curses shall come upon thee. They shall pursue thee, meaning you can't run from them. Right. You can't run from these curses. Period. No matter how well you're doing, you're going to get through it. Like a lot of these celebrities think because they got money that they're exempt from any type of racism or anything like that. But they going through it too. Yes. I can't believe that this is 2019 and I'm still dealing with this. You're a nigga with money. Right. Point blank. That's what you are. <laughs> they look at you the same way. Makes no difference. But our people think it's a difference. It's no difference. You're a nigga with money. They allowed you to have money. It is what it is. They feel the same way about you. You being rich, then the same brother out there selling dope to his people. Right. You're a nigga to them. All right? Come on. It says, I'll pursue thee. Shall pursue thee and overtake thee uh -huh. till thou be destroyed. Uh -huh. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee. And it said, it's gonna, these are going to come on you until they destroy you. It's going to destroy you. And it's going to come to the point. What does it say? What's that scripture that says, uh, dang, captivity. Uh, it makes a wise man mad. Captivity. What is it? Oppression makes a wise man mad. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Come on. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. It said oppression make a wise man, a man of understanding mad. He sees it. 
He understands it. And he understands it needs to be a solution. It got to be a solution to get out of this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oppression maketh a wise man mad. Come on. And a gift destroyeth the heart. But guess what? A gift is going to destroy the heart. They give you things to kind of wind you down. To, so you won't understand. You won't wake up. So you won't be conscious of what, you, what your people is going through. They give you the gifts. They give you money. They give you, all, they give you a good job. You think you all that. So now all of a sudden your people ain't going through nothing because your pockets is fat. But they, guess what? They destroy you. Or, say for instance, with all these killings, these cops killings that's happened to our people, and what do they do? They send who out to come shut us up? Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, all these other leaders that never pop up or care nothing about our people until somebody die. That's the only time. They come and shut you up. Send them, like, go down there and do this. Or send Obama. Have Obama do a speech or whatever when he was in office, whatever the case may be, to shut these Negroes up. The gift destroyed the heart. You had something? Yes, yes, because brothers and sisters think that they're getting paid, they have money. Understand, we are still in captivity. Yes, sir. I just want to pull that scripture for you. Go ahead. Uh, the book of Baruch, Baruch three chapter 3, yes, verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. The scripture said, behold, we are yet. He said, yet this day? Yet this day. Yet this day. We are in captivity today. Come on. Where thou hast scattered us. Uh-huh. For a reproach, reproach. For a reproach. Come on. And a curse. So we've, we are still today in captivity. Why? And under the curses. We are under the curses until Christ, is come, until Christ come back. Period. We're going to be under the curse until Christ come back and redeem the nation of Israel back. Come on. And to be subject to uh -huh. payments. And we're going to be subject to payments. Come on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. Because we sin. Our forefathers sin. And we're in the same predicament. We've gotten worse. We've waxed worse now. We've gotten worse than our dang forefathers. I can't imagine. You're talking about nobody made it through but Joshua and Caleb that came out of the, you know, the exodus. Right. But the children, people 20 and under, and they didn't make it. Just imagine what it is now. Just imagine how far we've been. At least they were still conscious of enough of what's going on. Right. Now, oh, bruh, our people don't know nothing. They look at us crazy going out there and teaching on the corners. But we out there for our people to let you know that you are in error, that you're God-chosen people. We are yet this day in captivity. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. We almost done. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45 again. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 40, 45. Come on. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till uh -huh. thou be destroyed. Come on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee. Uh-huh. Verse 46. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So these curses shall be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. This, these curses identify who the nation of Israel is today. Period. All nations have not been through this. We are the only people. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the only people that went through these curses. Period. Historically, it's in the books. Esau didn't wrote, wrote them in the books. We have, we have documentation. All right? We've been through all of these curses. This is how we identify and solidify who we are as a nation of people. These curses, knowing these curses is very important because this has everything to do with your salvation by you understanding who you are according to the Bible. All right? Jump down to verse 64. Verse 64. In verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee upon all people uh -huh. from one end of the earth even, un even unto the other. So we're going to be scattered amongst all people from, from one end to the other. So we're going to be scattered all over the world. So Israel is everywhere. Come on. And there shall serve other gods. Uh, you which, said what? 
there shall serve other gods. It said, we're going to serve other gods. We're going to serve other gods except the God of Israel. That's what's going to happen. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And we're going to serve gods that our forefathers had no idea who they were. We're going to serve other gods. We're going to serve new gods that don't even exist, but we're going to serve them. We're going to serve wherever we're at. We're going to serve that God, wherever we was taken to. Whether you use, use Buddha, name some of these, the Hindu gods, what else? Catholic. Cat, Christian, Christianity, um, Islam. Was it dang rock? We're going to get to that. Matter of fact, let's read that. Let's see. see. Even wood and stone. It said what? Even wood and stone. Read it from the top again. Verse 64. Uh -huh. and, thou shalt, and, thou, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people mm. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Come on. And there shall serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, uh -huh. even wood and stone. Even wood or stone, meaning what? The wood represents the, the cross right. for Christianity, all right? The cross for Christianity, our people, that's probably the worst thing that ever happened in our people, all right? It is the worst thing that ever happened in our people is Christianity. All the different denominations, none of that stuff is about Christ whatsoever. Right. None of it. The second is the, the, the stone, which is what? Islam. That dang rock over there in Mecca that they spitting and throwing up on, whatever they doing, <laughs> all these people is doing all this crazy, running around it, is the second worst thing to happen to our people. Right. All right? Period. Our people are lost, man. And that's what our people is following. They don't want to follow the, 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 the true God of Israel, the only God. They don't, want, they don't want to have nothing to do with the, with the only, the black Christ. The black Jesus the Christ. They don't want to deal with that. They think when they go to sleep at night and they pray, they see white Jesus. That's what they see. They don't see themselves. Right. They don't see themselves at all. They can't see Christ in one another. That's why when we step on each other's shoes, nigga, it's time to fight. Oh, yeah. Let's get it in. Or I'm, about to, I'm about to shoot you. You ain't going home just because you, you scuffed my shoes up because we don't see Christ in one another. And that is a problem because we've lost our way. Uh, verse 65. Verse 65. Uh-huh. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Come on. Neither shall, shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart uh -huh. and a failing of eyes and a sorrow of mind. It says the Lord, it says the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart and fall, a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Why? So we can look back to him. Right. So we can say, dang, what did I do? Why am I going through this? Right. What's the solution? That's, what, that's, why, uh, that's why we went to the scripture in Ecclesiastes 7. It said, a wise man, he said, uh, Cap, what does it say? Oppression. Oppression maketh a wise man mad. You start to see the things like, dang. Why are we going through this? And then you will start understanding that the most our God put us there because of our terrible actions. Us not following him. Us not enjoying the high holy days that he gave us. Period. Come on. Verse 66. Uh-huh. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Uh-huh. And thou shalt fear day and night. We're going to fear day and night. Come on. And shall have no assurance of thy life. Come on. Verse 66, or 67, excuse me. In the morning thou shalt say, with God, if there be, it, excuse me, verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, with God, it were even. So basically, <laughs> we're going to be going through so much. We're gonna, when we wake up in the morning, we're going to wish it was nighttime again. We're going to wish we could go back to sleep. <laughs> we, wanna see, we don't really want to see it because we're going to have to go through all this turmoil. Come on. And that evening thou shalt say, with God, it were, morn it were morning. So same thing for even. Even at night, you're like, man, I can't wait till the morning. You don't even want to live no more. Right. You, you're like, man, I'm going through all of these curses. I'm going through all of this. Why? The most I put us through this to wake us up. 
He used the other nations to put their foot in our behind right. so we can wake up and do what he says. Now the nation of Israel is starting to wake up. We're starting to keep the commandments. We're rising up. Like, like, like Bishop said, Israel ain't small no more. Right. Even since I've been, I've been in, what, six years? And you're talking about we've tripled. Now, I'm not just talking about Israel united in Christ. I'm talking about people knowing who they are. Israel, period. Them knowing who they are is tripled from when I came in. So let you know the most high God is working with us. We just got to believe. Come on. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear. Uh-huh. And for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. Anyway. Verse 68. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the most high God said he's going to bring us again to Egypt again with ships. We never went back to Egypt on We never left Egypt on ships. At all. We didn't go and get on ships when we left Egypt. So what is he talking about? Egypt is synonymous for slavery, bondage, captivity. If you read, uh, was it Exodus 20 and 2? 20 and 1. 20 and 1 through 2? 2, yes, sir. So, and it's explained that Egypt is considered captivity. All right? Slavery, bondage. That's what it's talking about. He said, y'all going to go back to Egypt. So what Egypt is it talking about? America. America is Egypt, spiritually Egypt. Or Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah. This place is going to burn. I'm telling you, you better get your mind right. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So when we park, <laughs> when they park the boat, we're going to be sold to who? Your enemies. To who? Your enemies. We're going to be sold to our enemies. These people aren't your friend. They never will be. They're your, the, the Bible is telling you they're your enemy. They're against you. They're against me even. The Bible is telling you that, that they're against you. Come on. For bond men. For slave men. They gonna, that's, that's what happened. We got off the ship. They, they checked our teeth. They did a, basically a physical checked our teeth, they rubbed you down with oil, lube, you know, basically oiled you up, lubed you up, <laughs> put you on an auction block like you was nothing. Right. You're talking about a dead heat. You know what I'm saying? That's what they did at our people, bro. That's what they did at our people. And it says our enemy for bond man, meaning slave man, come on. And bond woman. And slave woman because the women went through the same thing we did. They been they was raped by by they was raped. They was used for wine, all types of things. You was married, and what do they do? They they just they say for instance they had company. The slave owner had company from somebody from Massachusetts or something, and they had you know what I'm saying. They gave wine. They had a good time. You had people playing. You had to play music. The slaves playing music, dancing. Shucking and jiving and all of that. And guess what? You was married, and he look at you up on your wife like, listen, I want her. It ain't nothing you can do about it. When they take her and that man go in there and have sex with your wife, and then send them back to you. How do you think that feel? It's the worst thing ever, and you can't do nothing about it. They broke our men. They had sex with the men in front of their wives. Brutally raped them, right. tied them down and raped them. They had it to where we was had that the Bucks was having sex with their own parents. I'm telling you, man, they did some sick stuff to our people, and you want to call these people a friend? They are enemies, and we must wake up and keep God's commandments. Well, that, are we done with that? Read on. No, that's it. Is that oh, it? Oh yes, and no man shall buy you. It said, no man shall buy us. Nobody's going to be able to save us but when the, the Most High God sent Christ to come out and redeem the nation of Israel, period. Nobody can save us. Marcus Garvey couldn't save us. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, Dick Gregory. Nobody could save us. Nobody could save us. Obama. 
They thought he was a dang savior. Then nothing happened. Nothing got better for our people. Right. At all. It got worse. It got worse for our people. People all running around. You got gay rights. Our people just took it to a whole new level. Period. So we got to get our minds right, Israel, all right? That's it for uh, the part two of the curses among Israel. And, and listen, check out part one. The curses identify who you are according to the Bible. It's very important and has everything to do with your salvation, all right? You must know who you are according to the Bible. Once again, my name is Captain Paolo, and to my right, Officer Daniela. All right, Shalom, Most High, Christ bless. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.